Kanuta, Madame Konuche, um, Honorable Cheboy, always very humorous. Um, thank you for being here. Mr. Mule representing the Director of Public Prosecutions, Karibu Sana. Uh, I want to recognize the, pres the presence of, the, of His Excellency, the Governor of Migori County, Honorable Chilo Ayako, Karibu Sana. Nice to have you here. Um, we have parents and guardians who have come to witness the admission of uh, their children and their benefactors. Now, our newest advocates in town. Good, good morning. Is it still morning? You all look great. I Premises. It is always a joy for us as judiciary to host. Welcome to the legal Very indeed. Just wish you a great time as you start this journey. Let me join all those who have spoken before me in congratulating for this very well-deserved admission today. I'm sure each and every one of you knows one or two people that started this journey with you. They are not yet, they're not here this morning with you. They are maybe not even almost coming here. So it's a great privilege to have made the finish line. And I'll just ask that we give ourselves a round of applause. Um, well done. Let me take this early opportunity to appreciate all my colleagues who work in the advocate section, led by Honorable Moses Wanjala. Uh, thank you very much for the work that you do together with our team. Uh, the judiciary recently introduced um, a, a digital system uh, to process your admissions. Did we all use it? Was it difficult to use? Anybody had challenges using it? Great. So we, at the judiciary, we keep trying. And um, we are happy that all of you, that we could process 822 uh, people in one sweep. It would have been a bit challenging if we were still uh, on our um, manual system. Uh, we had a little bit of disorganization this morning. Uh, I don't know what happened. That is not how we are usually. And I know that next time, Honorable Chief Justice, it's going to be better. We've listened to all the previous speakers. They've told us what is expected of us as advocates. And as I keep telling all our um, new advocates that we've admitted here before, that these principles apply across the board. Whether you decide to be in private practice, whether you join the private sector, whether you want to be in the corporate world, in civil society, wherever, the principles will apply the same. And if you go by what we've been advised this morning, it shall be well with you. I want to also just say this, and it's something I keep telling all groups like this, the judiciary is an excellent place to work. We are very competitive. Uh, we are the best in public service. And uh, we always have opportunities for young people, uh, whether as legal researchers, as magistrates, as um, we now have a new um, cadre for registrars, so that the entry point is deputy assistant registrar if you do not want to be on the judicial side. We also have opportunities in our mediation program. We have opportunities in our pro bono uh, POPA brief um, framework. And uh, I know we've been having challenges with our pro bono program. I just want to take this opportunity to thank the president of the Law Society of Kenya because um, you have given us a team to work with us to streamline our POPA brief system so that uh, we can continue to participate as we should. 
Um, I have been asked by the Honorable the Chief Justice to look for Kiprope, the young man from Baringo. The Chief Justice has ordered me to look for you for a discussion after this. So, uh, so please look for me and we will have a chat. So thank you all so much. Um, I wish you the best as you begin this journey. Uh, we, our doors are always open for any kind of professional interaction. Do not hesitate to reach out if there is need for you to do that. And with those not so few remarks, I will ask the Honorable the Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court of Kenya to come forward and address us. Honorable Chief Justice, please. Thank you very much, the Honorable Chief Register of the Judiciary. Please be seated. Um, thank you. Um, wow. <laughs> yes, on a day like today, I get emotional uh, because my memories take me to uh, 1987, I think is that uh, six years ago when I sat where you are, uh, looking hopeful, looking expectant, and also having butterflies in my stomach, and listening to wonderful speech, which those days were brief. It was only the CJ, the, uh, the president of the Law Society, who was then uh, Dr. Friend or Jambo, and then as a photograph, and then we would go home. And that was a journey. So today I'm most privileged to welcome all of you to the judiciary and recognize our very special guests who are here with us today and to adopt all those protocols that have been established and adopt them and say you're most welcome and we are so, so proud and so honored to have all of you. I see uh, the president of the senior bar, Dr. Friend Ojiambo, you are still here, that uh, six years ago you looked the same, you might. <laughs> have a conversation with him to tell you how he has looked after himself and remained youthful. We have the president of the Law Society of Kenya. Thank you for always supporting us. I must recognize the Honorable Otiende Amoro, the member of Jura Committee, and also for representing the, the chair of the senior bar. Uh, Honorable Cheboy, thank you so much for coming to grace this occasion on behalf of the Attorney General, who is the titular end of the bar. I recognize also Mr. Mure representing the DPP and all the distinguished uh, speakers this morning, Honorable Judges, who are parents of some of these wonderful advocates, our magistrates, registrars, our governor from Migori, and I also noticed today I'm honored to have a very distinguished person who played a key role in mentoring me, Dr. Jennifer Edia, is here this morning to witness this occasion. All of you newly admitted advocates, a very good afternoon to you. I must repeat it, that you look awesome. You are well groomed. The ladies are looking beautiful, made up. The guys are looking great. And you make me proud. Because one of the conversations we have is about dress and address. So I think that one is sorted out. As you move on to practice, don't worry because you remember how you dress today. This is how you're supposed to dress all the time 
when you are appearing before the judges. Because sometimes they come and tell you, we cannot see you, we cannot hear you, and you wonder what is the matter. Because you just borrowed a bib, which is hanging on another tie or another blouse. Just remember the way you look today and keep that photo. It will keep reminding you, this is how you should look like. So, when you speak last, after such wonderful speeches, and they put in the program that you're supposed to give a keynote speech as the CJ. I wondered now, unless I adopt those uh, wonderful messages that have been conveyed to you this morning, perhaps that is when my speech will have a key or a note. <laughs> because everything I wanted to say has been said. But I must extend my very, very sincere and hearty congratulations to you all, 822, on your admission to the role of advocates. Don't be discouraged by what uh, Honorable Cheboy said. <laughs> I have prayed over you because I'm a prayerful woman that none of you will find themselves in that commission you will succeed by living by those values and principles of integrity that you have been taught. And the journey that started many years ago, the struggles you have been through, will not be lost by any of you being struck off this role of advocates. So for me, this is a feat that you have hand, the hand way, and you have deserved it. You know, more than any one of us, it has taken dedication, industry, sacrifice, and sometimes the journey has also disappointed you, and you have suffered heartache. But all you know today, it's a new dawn. All that is in the past. We have admitted you as advocates of all the courts, including my court, the Supreme Court. <laughs> so we all celebrate, and I join your parents, your guardians, and everybody who has supported you to celebrate this occasion of the admission to the bar. Not only is this an extremely happy occasion for you, it is also an occasion of great joy to your loved ones, your families, your colleagues, and you have heard them mention some of you that they have supported. I am sure they all feel most justifiably proud of your achievement, and they are so happy for you. Indeed, your admission to the role of advocates represents a reward to their unfailing love, timely encouragement, generous help, and unceasing patience over the years that they have struggled with you. I thank them for the support that they have accorded you thus far. So today, I'm also proud to call you learned friends and tell you our country, like many others, has been grappling with historical injustices. We have immense inequalities and exclusions. These have been the unfortunate bane of our society permeating our judicial system and denying a considerable number of our people the right to access justice. Today, you have the power to contribute and play a role in reversing this narrative and steering our country towards a brighter and more equitable future. Let no one tell you that there is no legal work for advocates. Indeed, when they were preparing for this ceremony, 
they warned me that uh, we have 822. Can we leave out some? And I said, we are leaving no one behind. Everybody who is ready to be admitted, I am not going to stand in the way of an advocate even one day. Let me admit everybody so that we release them to go and realize their potential. Today, there are two of your colleagues who are breast. Last night, one gave birth to a baby boy. Today, another one is being admitted to hospital to give birth. I send even those two. I will swear them. So that is why we had a separate ceremony in my chambers where I admitted those two because we have this policy that we leave no one behind. So I want to assure you, contrary to the claim that there are many lawyers, to me, you are just a drop in the bucket. Because when I look at the statistics of the population of this country, I'm told we are 55 million. And the economy is 11 trillion. Because I think taxes are 3.6 trillion. So that is supposed to be about 30%. So when you put the other 70%, it is 11 trillion. And I therefore submit, when advocates have worked and been admitted after so many years of struggle, none of you should go hungry. None of you should lack something to do in this economy. So all I urge you is to be disciplined the way your teachers have told you and all the other speakers. And also, in addition to being disciplined and living by those principles, you also become champions of ensuring that there is justice wherever we live. Join us in the calling that we are advancing a call to social transformation through access to justice, which is inherent in the underpinning of our vision for the judiciary. We are calling upon lawyers to play their part in the justice sector to help us in the realization of the constitutional underpinning of a socially just state and society. As advocates, you are all in price that you do more than just being representatives of your clients. You are defenders of justice. You are counselors. You are a beacon of hope for those who seek justice. Our social transformation through access to justice calls upon us to make the justice system more inclusive, more accessible, unfair to all Kenyans, particularly the most vulnerable among us. These are our brothers and sisters who have been historically sidelined. The poor women, the windows, the children, the persons living with disabilities, the marginalized and those living in remote and, dis and underserved areas of our country. I urge you to play your law in empowering them and enabling them to access justice and to use your new professional position to protect their rights and dignity. The law is not a static entity, but a dynamic one. Its interpretation and application can be a source of liberation or a source of subjugation, depending on how we look at it. As new advocates, your primary allegiance should not be to winning cases at any cost. You have been told 
it is not a case that is won or lost. It is the law that is interpreted and it is the law that prevails. Therefore, as you champion the agenda of ensuring access to justice, remember that your crimes are not just cases. They are people. And that's what we are telling each other, even as judges, as magistrates, judicial workers here, we are saying these files, now they come online. These are people. People whose lives can be significantly impacted by the quality of your representation as well. That is why under our vision, we are talking about creating a people-centered justice system where the outcomes and the ends that we pursue ought to have a positive transformation, transformative impact on the lives of our people. We must strive to create a legal profession that is not only respected for its intellectual vigor and professional excellence, but also revered for its compassion and commitment to the social justice. A profession that enhances the quality of the justice of our people when they seek solutions to their legal problems so that they do not end up worse than before they came to court. A profession that contributes to the building of a society founded on the principles of fairness, equality, and justice. As champions of our vision and also the Constitution, which has a very transformative agenda, I will urge you to use your knowledge, skills, and passion to transform the lives. First of all, look at yourselves as you step out, because we encourage you also to transform the lives of communities and ultimately the lives of our people and the entire nation. But we first of all begin with ourselves. And the way you look today is the way you should look every day. Because you must uh, be a source of encouragement to the other people who look at you. So first of all, look after yourselves. Look after the communities and the people around you and then our nation. Never lose sight of the great responsibility that comes with the law of becoming an advocate. Always uphold those values of integrity, honesty, and diligence. Remember the practice of law is not just a way of earning a living, it's a calling to participate in the administration of justice. Advocates are called to be ministers in the temple of justice. Because of this, the defining feature of what it means to be an advocate is the overarching question of character, where one manifests a real deficit in the crucial attributes of honesty and integrity, one cannot be trusted to duly serve as an officer of the court ending in the administration of justice. Therefore, we should remember the inescapable truth that being an advocate entails a choice to live by the values that you have been spoken to this morning. This is important because each one of us uh, by our involvement in this enterprise of administering justice as the ability to do tremendous good or to inflict tremendous harm depending on whether we place character and values at the forefront of what guides us. That is why admission to the bar is about character first and only then about competence. It is for this reason that you must live by the ethics of the profession. In order to avoid the tragedy, Honorable Chevoy talked about, of being struck off the role of advocates that you have signed today, for me, this will be a very great loss, not only to yourself, your family, but also to your nation, if you are struck off the law. 
a privilege that you have earned after so many years of hard work and sacrifice. I therefore will print with you to live by those ethical standards expected to guide uh, the conduct of advocates in all that you undertake to do. We, as a judiciary, have recently inaugurated the Chief Justice's Young Advocates Mentorship Program. I expected you to clap for that. <laughs> to help you, those who are willing, find footing in the profession. We were also mentored by our seniors when we joined the profession. And we sat as the office of the Chief Justice with my colleagues, judges and magistrates and registrars and we felt it is necessary for us to begin a conversation of building confidence in the young lawyers who are being admitted to the bar, to tell them there is hope, for them to keep the faith and to keep going. So this program has two limbs, and we do it also with the Law Society. The Vice President of the Law Society, the President of the Law Society, they have been very supportive and the entire council of the Law Society trying to see how we can encourage the young lawyers that there is hope in this profession. So we are looking to encouraging young lawyers never to give up. You can sign in in the Pro Bono Legal Aid Scheme that allows young advocates to earn a modest stipend as you represent vulnerable persons. And as you represent them, it's not just the stipend. You learn a lot. You gain a lot of experience. The second limb is mentorship, which allows the senior bar, led by uh, the president of the senior bar and also the president of the law society and other distinguished legal professionals, to guide you through trial advocacy skills, training and mentorship in the ways of the profession. The firm of uh, ANK, I think, is already doing that, and we are partnering with them to help us with training. I therefore urge those of you who are interested to be beneficiaries of the program to get in touch with us, to be enlisted to the program. In conclusion, I urge you to be relentless in your pursuit of justice. Seek out those who have been silenced and give them a voice. Empower the marginalized, the neglected, the oppressed. Stand up for what is right, even when it is inconvenient or unpopular as the president of the Law Society has said. If we can do this, if we can all truly live by these principles, then I'm confident that as a legal profession, we can contribute to the social transformation that our country so desperately needs and that we all stated in our 2010 constitution as our aspiration. Congratulations once again on your remarkable achievement. Remember the law which you have learned is both a shield and a sword. Wield it wisely so that it can serve you. I thank you and pray that God will continue to shine his light upon you and to guide you every day of your lives and you will never lack. Now, today, like I said, it's a very emotional day for me to celebrate all of you, 822, and how I wish I could join each one of you in your celebrations, in your lunch, in your dinner, uh, whatever you're throwing about to celebrate these big milestones in your life. So I recognize each one of you and celebrate each one of you. And I will ask you to join me today.
because during these ceremonies, as I celebrate each one of you, we also like to recognize members of the judiciary family who have worked extremely hard to earn this qualification. Some of them go to school while they are working full time. Some of them support others. So on a day like this, we recognize our immediate family, comprising colleagues in the judiciary, staff members who joined the judiciary before acquiring legal qualifications, but stand in hand despite the heavy workload to obtain this covetant qualification. We also celebrate our extended family, uh, our children, siblings, spouses, mentees of our colleagues who have worked with us and uh, inspired so many of you to join the legal profession. So today I am with humility, uh, extremely proud of the following from the judiciary family. Nehemiah Reken Nanyoike. Where are you? He is a court assistant at Kiogoli's Law Courts, who standing and today he has been admitted as an advocate. Virginia Kabata Maingi is a court assistant working at a political parties disputes tribunal. She has been able to jungle her work there and study to qualify to be an advocate and be sworn today. So, Spita Munene Njeru, where are you? This is a son of our colleague, the Honorable Justice Jesse Nyaga, a judge of the High Court. I don't know whether your dad is around, but we celebrate you. <laughs> Benjamin Vinya Macau, where are you? He is the son of the Honorable Mr. Justice Onesmas Macau. Congratulations to you and your wife for bringing up a fine young man. I hope he will also become a judge like you. And Judge Macau is a judge in ELRC. Nesta Apone Valentine Ragot, where are you? You are son of our judge, Rende Justice Judith Omange, judge in ELC. Congratulations, uh, Lagot. Where are you? You are scared of standing up. Your mom is very proud of you, and we are all for bringing up a lawyer in the family. Kanyangi Angelin Otieno, Atieno, congratulations, you are the daughter to Christine Kanyangi, our court administrator at the court um, tribunal, cooperative tribunal. Oro Aneti Anyango. Uh, Olo Aneti Anyango to Yusuf Jasho, who works in my office. We congratulate Yusuf for encouraging you and also congratulate you today. Uh, Tent Mutungi, uh, we also recognize you because you are related to George Muhoro who works in the Judiciary Audit uh, Directorate. Congratulations. Samuel Getonga Mwangi is also related to Hendrix Buire of the OCRJ Advocate Section. You can see the people who work in this section are busy mentoring young advocates. Uh, we also recognize the following candidates. Um, because they are very close to me, they are children of my classmates, people we sat with here that uh, six years ago. They have brought forth wonderful uh, men who have become advocates today. Sin Daniel Odabu, where are you, Mr. Odabu? His father is uh, Mr. Odabu, a former magistrate, a colleague of mine, a former classmate. Saleh Hamil Ali and Hali Amil Hali. These are two young men, sons of my classmates, Mr. Mills Saleh. You are classmates 
We sat here 36 years ago to be admitted as advocates, and now they have brought forth uh, sons, and I really respect them because they do work that touches not only uh, the people they serve, but I believe touches the heart of God. They work with the vulnerable children, homeless children. I visited their home, and I was touched to find the young men looking after babies who are abandoned. Thank you very much, and may God bless you. <laughs> then we have the oldest candidate this, um, this ceremony, Mr. Moses Dorima, the Deputy Secretary General of CUPET, who at the age of 60 went to school after finishing educating his children and decided to educate himself. <laughs> So today we celebrate him and congratulate him. He is the oldest new advocate to be admitted today. Then we have Abdul Basit Hussein Maharim, uh, also a friend of my son, Kelvin Kome, told me if I don't recognize him, <laughs> we will have a battle tonight. So I didn't want to quarrel with my son. We acknowledge you, Abdul. Then a cop. Luisa Oshiro, we recognize you. Where are you? The daughter of our distinguished governor of Migori, His Excellency Achiro Ayako, and your wife. Congratulations. Congratulations. Kareb Samburu Chacha, uh, son of our judge, Justice Chacha Mwita, where are you? Oh, congratulations. I also wish to acknowledge Adam Rudek Shwere. Uh, where are you? Uh, we know your dad. We have worked with him in the public service. And you are also our, the nephew to our chief registrar of the judiciary. We celebrate you. <laughs> Miriam Odiambo Hamoro, you are recognized by your dad. But I also wish to celebrate you. Please stand up, Miriam. We celebrate you uh, and congratulate you and your family uh, for this achievement. Uh, finally, allow me to honor in a very, very special way Professor Akoma, the Vice Chancellor of Kisi University, who is in attendance. I don't know where Prof you are. If Please let's uh, recognize you. He doesn't have a child here, but he traveled all the way to witness his students, the students from Kisi University. Where are you? It was only one. Oh, okay. Kisi University. Your vice chancellor traveled here to witness this occasion, and we thank him and thank you and congratulate you. Uh, finally, I think, uh, so that you do not wonder, because people say, who are you sworn with? This morning I saw Susan Modoni Karioki and Mwafusi Priscilla Mfawe, who I told you have gone to do the work of perpetuating our population this morning. <laughs> so they were also sworn. Please join me in congratulating them and the newborn babies. So thank you very much and all the best. I have kept the list of all the people I have admitted in the last two years. I keep remembering them in prayer. And I keep encouraging them whenever I meet them. Please let us walk this talk. It's narrow. Let us just walk narrow and the streets. We will get wherever we need to get. Whatever God puts in your hand, be it a small brief, be it a big brief, be it small money or a lot of money, Make the best use of it. God bless you. Thank you very much.